Hey again, have you ever heard of the term shadow wrap when it comes to Vue 3 and the composition API? Hmm? 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 No? Well, then let's have a look at shadow wrap, what it does, what its capabilities are, and why it exists. Let's go! Before we have a look at all the scenarios where shadow wrap makes sense, let's find out first what it's actually doing. And for this, I've prepared a little playground. This playground is adapted from the Reactivity Advanced page on the Vue.js docs, also covering Shallow Ref. And in here, we have a very short counter app. The only thing that might seem off is that we don't have a ref called count and that's just holding the numeric value of the current count, but instead having a state here, holding an object with count. That's not how you would usually build a counter, but Bear with me, it makes sense if we see what ShellRef is doing. Also, a little disclaimer that might seem a bit weird and also ShellRef is not useful for building a counter, but that's the easiest way to show what's actually happening under the hood. So if we hit now the increment button, we'll see it's all fine, the count increases. Let's change the ref here though to ShellRef. And we hit the increment button once again and nothing happens here. So by changing it to shallow ref, our counter is broken now. Why that? Well, shallow ref does not provide deeply nested reactivity. So it will only actually trigger a change and notifies all the dependency when the whole value, like in this case, the whole object is swapped out or replaced. So if we change something deep inside, like that count, which is inside the object, nothing will happen. Instead, we can say stated value, so we replace the whole ref with a new object holding count as state.value.counts plus one. If we do this, the counter works again. And now you might wonder, yeah, as I said before, for counter, it doesn't make much sense, but where is shallow ref actually useful? And well, it comes really handy for performance optimizations only especially when you have large data structures where you're more than sure that you will only replace them and not transform them internally and don't need all the nested reactivity. There are two main use cases where this is used in the wild. And this is one, integrating external state management. For example, we'll do it in a bit, taking a look at signals. That's also in a way reactivity and state management pattern and how to implement it with shallow ref. And the second one is data fetching, because if you get a response from an API, you take the data from there. You might transform them and then save them in a shallow ref, but then the data doesn't really change, right? You do your transformations, you can still say, okay, I create a computer based on the data I got, but the data will only be replaced if you do, for example, another call, or if you watch a parameter and then say, hey, please update the data by calling the API again. And in this case, especially because API data can become huge, you don't need all the nested reactivity and use a shallow ref there. We will have a look at these scenarios right now. Let's start with the signals. If you haven't heard of them, they are very popular right now among the React and also Angular world, but are not that present in Vue, mainly because Vue already gives us some nice low level building blocks for reactivity like ref and reactive. So, Still, if we want to, we can create that signal structure that you know, maybe from solid or also Angular in Vue. And we do it with shallow ref. Also, this playground is once again adapted from the docs that also give an example for that. By the way, just as a side note, the framework authors of major frameworks are right now aligning on how signals could maybe standardized in all the frameworks. So let's see how that will happen. Let's take a look at the code. So we have a function called create signal here, which takes a value and also options, which we'll have a look at in a bit. And now we take a reactive reference as a shallow ref in here in line four and save that. So next we would define a getter and a setter, a getter just being a function returning the value of the shallow ref via r.value and the setter taking any kind of value and check. If it's a function, please invoke that function with the current value of the directive representation and otherwise just set it straight away. So if it's a function, invoke it, set the value, otherwise just pass it on. And then for the options, there's an options check and say, okay, if equals is set to false, please 
trigger um, the effect of that ref. So trigger ref is a function that, as it says here, force trigger effects that depends on a shallow ref. The idea would be that, okay, um, I always want to trigger a change just in case something changes here, no matter if the values are the same or not. You don't need a trigger ref if you say, I only want to listen to changes, but if you want to have an update all the time something changes and we ignore that the values are the same, that's needed here. And then we just return the getter and the setter in that array syntax. And in our app.view, we import that, and then we create once again another count um, by saying create signal and providing a default value of zero. And then we get the getter function count and the setter function set count, which is a higher order function. So we call counts in our template. In view, you usually would write it like this, but we expose a getter function, so we actually have to call it. And then an on click, we say, okay, please set the count, take the current value and add one to the current value here. Of course, this could also live in an extra function, but that's just for the sake of simplicity. And that works fine. So why do we actually use a shallow ref in the create signal implementation here? Well, mainly because that value here holding in, in that ref of R, that will always be replaced. That will never be mutated directly because we only have a getter function where you should read the value and not manipulate it. And all changes come through the setter function, which will always replace the value eventually. Thus, we don't need deep reactivity, so we can live without it and get that sweet performance gains by using a shallow ref. There we go. So far, so good. We covered signals and also similar works when you have some immutable state or some other state management tools you want to integrate, that works. And now we come to the second topic, which is data fetching. We will have two examples there. The first one will be from viewuse.org, um, a collection of composables that probably all of you already know. And we have a look at the use fetch method there. Not to mix up with the use fetch method of Nux. But talking about Nux, yeah, there was also a change recently that uses a shell ref in use async data and use fetch. So we'll cover that in a second. First, let's start with the viewuse example. ViewUse is providing a very nice wrapper around the Fetch API already out of the box. And if you use PlainView, that might be a great idea to use it. If you use Nuxt, you probably will use Nuxt use Fetch Composable, which we'll have a look in a little bit. But first, let's check out the source code here in that use Fetch. And in here, we already see, oh, shallow ref is imported. So where is it actually used? Well, in GitHub already spoilers us that here. In line 371, we say, oh, great. So the response and also the error on the data is saved in a shallow ref. Why that? Well, once again, if you fetch the data, the response, well, you get it and it will never change. You might want to transform it. You want to like do some, um, create some values based on that, but you will never really alter the response unless there is a new response coming in, which you will then replace. So let's check response.value and we say, okay, we have a request and then we set the value straight away. We never alter it directly. Same for the data and also the arrow. And then we can use shallow ref easily to indicate, okay, we don't need that deeply nested reactivity and the changes will be triggered as soon as the value is replaced. And same goes for the data composables in NUX3. So there was a PR three weeks ago that landed in version 3.8, which um, is the latest version right now at the time of recording. And there are new options for use async data and use fetch to use a shallow ref instead of a ref. Right now there's a ref used. And if we have a look at the files changed here, then we see a new deep option has been introduced. And it can be set to false because by default, deep must be true to not introduce the breaking changes because a ref is always used. And if you would change it, others people's called my break, that wouldn't be good. So you can set that manually to false and then a shallow ref will be used. Most likely there won't be any big changes in terms of code for you, but the performance wins can be great, especially if you have lots of data coming from that API. And the best part is you can set it for use fetch or use async data. And you might even want to set this as a default. I've created a little stack blitz, link again in the description to showcase how that actually works in Nuxt. So we are in the Nuxt config TS and in here 
we use the experimental feature, which means you better pin your Nuxt version if you use that. And we use the defaults object and in here in use async data, we set deep to false because it is true by default. So if you set it for use async data, that will also apply to use fetch because use fetch is using use async data under the hood if it's also written here. And with that config, data and error will be shallow refs and no plain refs anymore, which means you get some sweet performance wins. So shallow ref doesn't seem the daunting anymore, right? You now know how it works, what it's doing, known as the reactivity, and only if you replace the value or call trigger ref. And you know also that you might have used it under the hood already, for example, by using some frameworks like Nuxt or some view use composables, or even some component libraries like Viewdefy, because they also want these sweet performance gains if they know they will only replace the state. As a side note here, there's also shallow reactive and even shallow read only, which work in a very similar way. They don't have any nested reactivity, but only if you replace the value. But as um, ref is the main way of doing reactivity in most code bases, I've omitted them here for brevity. As I said before, it works the same and you can check the docs for the info there. Any questions left? As you know, please drop them in the comments. Let me know if you will use shallow ref in the future or if you knew about it. Um, and if you learned a thing or two, and now the only thing left to say is happy hacking. See you in the next video.